Hey guys, welcome back. On the last video, we talked about single table inheritance and we stumbled upon a small issue. Um, so we have the user model, we had the doctor and the nurse models, which extend the user. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you gotta watch um, the previous video. And the issue is, if we go into Tinker and we do user all, you can see that we get both a nurse and we also get a doctor, but we're still getting user instances. So we wanna make sure when we fetch the parent model, we get the child instances when needed. To do this, we'll have to dive a little bit into Laravel score. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the model.php file. And I want you guys to check those two methods, the new instance and the new from builder. So when Laravel fetches data from a database, it calls this method new from builder. And you can see that it also calls the new instance to generate a new instance of the model then it sets the attributes that it got from the database, it sets the connection, and then it returns the model. To be able to return the proper instances, we'll have to override these two methods. We're going to have to override this one to return the proper instance. So right now it's returning static, which means it returns the class, in this case user, which is what's calling the method. And if we go to new from builder, you can see that it passes these attributes as an empty array. So inside the new instance method, we wouldn't be able to know whether we're talking about a doctor, a nurse, or just a generic user. We would have to change this. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to pass whether it's a nurse or a doctor into those attributes. And here we are going to determine what we got to return. Now, this isn't a solution I thought of. This was actually written by Caleb Porzio um, on his package called Parento. I'm just kind of like reverse engineering it and explaining it to you guys. Uh, getting the full implementation of single table inheritance involves a little bit more work than this and you can check the package. But I want to show you guys how it works and how you can do similar things uh, based on those concepts. So with no further ado, let's jump into our user map model. So I'm just going to copy those two methods. Since we're going to have to um, rewrite them, we'll have to copy them. I'm going to the user model and I'm going to paste them. So, okay. Now let's return, let's start with the new from builder. First, let's do a dump and die on this attributes variable. Let me clear this, whoops. Now let's run user all. Okay, so this is what we got. We got this object, uh, which has ID, name, email, blah, 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 blah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say attributes and I'm going to cast it to an array and we can change, we can remove this since it's already an array. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, type equals attributes type or no, something like this. So now let's go into this method and I'm going to dump the attributes array. Let's run it. Okay, I'm still getting empty. So let me go back here and dump this. Mm, that's interesting. Oh, never mind. It's because I was instantiating it first when I call the method. So, okay, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this and what I'm going to do is if it is a no attributes type, I wanna dump and die this attributes array. Now let's run it. Okay, so now we're getting the app models doctor. So we can do some magic with it. Since we know that we have this type, um, this type key on the array, we can do some magic here. So here it determined, here it instantiates model. So new static, which means we're calling new user actually on this case, or if we were on the doctor class, we would be calling new doctor. What we're going to do is let's do something like this. So model equals, if the attributes type is no, we want new static attributes. If it is a no, actually let me line this. So if it is no, we want the new static. If it is no, we want new, attributes type and pass in the attributes. So let's see if this works. Uh, let's see what happens. 
Okay, now we're guarding. We, we're not guarding. That doesn't. That word doesn't exist. We're getting the proper models. So we got app models nurse, and we got app models doctor. Now, what if I were to create um, a? Actually, we don't have the feature to create a generic user, but um, since we're passing it here, if the type doesn't exist, we're just passing it as no. It would fall into this piece of the if. And if we go and get all doctors, oops, models doctor, all, you can see that we are also getting the doctor class. Or if we call up models nurse all, we are getting the nurse class, which is awesome. That is exactly what we want. Now, one small change that we could make is, do we really want to return this type column here? Since we already know the instance, you might not want to. So what you can do is you can call, this is a helper class called array. It's from uh, eliminate support. We can do array accept and we can pass the array and say, hey, we want everything except for the type. So let's grab it now. Let's run user all and we have everything except the type. Since we already returned the proper instance, you can check whether it's a nurse or whether it's a doctor this way. And if we call nurse all, same thing. It returns a nurse instance, no type. If we call doctor all, it returns a doctor instance, no type. So yeah, guys, this is pretty much how um, single table inheritance would work on Laravel. And you can see that we did uh, rewrite a little bit of the model core functions, core methods. Nothing major, we just wanted to do this small change. But I think this gives you some insight on how easy it is to override um, Laravel's default behavior. You see, we didn't do anything fancy here. It was really, really simple. And if you check Caleb's package, you can see that it has way more logic to deal with events, to deal with relationships. So I highly suggest that you go through his code and see what he did. And of course, if you want to use this in production, I would suggest that you just use his package. But I think this is a great, uh, it's a great learning to see how things work on, how things work internally and how you can change Laravel behavior when you need to. Um, this was an example using new from builder and new instance, but you have so many more methods under the model class that you might want to add some extra functionality or change a little bit in your apps and you shouldn't feel worried. This shouldn't worry, you shouldn't feel nervous about changing um, the internals of the framework. Let's, let's put it like that. Of course, you have to be very careful with certain things, but as long as your code is properly tested and you know what you're doing, it is usually not an issue. You just got to be careful with framework updates since in this case, we are actually rewriting the whole method. Um, we're changing the method signature, so it's not the same anymore. Even if the framework were to update it, uh, we, we might not be up to date on our version of the methods. But anyway, hope you guys like this video. I think this is a very short one but I really hope um, it brought you some knowledge and, and that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions, any type of content that you would like to see on this channel. And yeah, talk to you all later. Bye-bye.